And so this is a good segue <clears throat> into what the next dance will actually be about is about our corn. So when men do their harvest, this is the harvest time for, for Hopi because we let the corn dry on the stalks because when you dry them on the stalks, they'll last longer. And so as you saw the young lady in the video, how she's stacking the corn. So it's, the way they do it, that's, that's basically a lady's responsibility. So how they do it is kind of like first in, first out kind of thing. So they're rotating those. So we're always, always preparing for what may come. So Hopis have been in practicing preservation for so long. So we dry things, and I didn't show you one of those videos. We dry peaches, we dry apricots, we dry our grapes, we, you know, we, they cut up the um, apples, we dry those. And as you saw the young lady making piki, that's part of our tradition. And those things will last. So <clears throat> in Hopi, we also have underground refrigerators. It's, it's a simple underground chamber, and it gets cold enough so that things are well preserved. So in the middle of winter, you'll see Hopis eating watermelon or apples, you know, things like that. So, so we've been doing this for centuries, for a long time, and we're the mo probably one of the most uh, conservative people when it comes to saving like water and food. In Hopi, it used to snow a lot. So our motto was, when it starts to snow, you stay home. You don't be going anywhere. <laughs> you know, you never know what's going to happen. But in today's time, do we listen? No, we're always on the road, things like that. But that was a good practice a long time ago. The other thing that... <clears throat> I wanted to share with you is that when men bring the crops home, like, like corn or any harvest, they bring it home to the woman, the wife. That harvest belongs to the wife. That becomes her property. And so let's say if uh, a, uh, a gentleman was asking for corn, and they come to me and say, do you have some blue corn or white corn I can plant? You have to go ask my wife because she's the caretaker of those seeds because they're also the same ones that give birth to young children. So they're the caretakers of all that. And so when, when a young girl is growing up, they start to, what you're going to see is they start to learn how to do Hopi things like grinding corn how to make Hopi foods, like you saw in the video, some, one of them was making piki, uh, somiviki, that the one you wrap in a corn husk. They learn all that before they get married. So when, when a young lady goes to the boy's house to get married, the, the, the belief is that that young lady doesn't just marry the girl, I mean the boy, she marries the whole family because it's her responsibility to start cooking for that family. So in Hopi, we call them mewi. So mewi is, is, is forever. I know a lot of times now we hear about divorces and things like that. But if my brother got married, if they got a divorce, his wife is always mewi. She's always honored in our homes. She's the number one person that we have. So there, in Hopi, there's no such thing as divorce. We don't believe in divorces. Because when it comes to kids, you know, we, we understand that too. They always belong to us. So this demonstration is going to tell you or, or show you about grinding. And out of that, cornmeal, we use that for prayer. As The white corn is used for prayer. The blue corn is used to make biki and somibiki and all those other foods that we eat as traditional Hopis. And a lot of times, you know, when, when we start to think about 
trying to say, let's take the easy way out kind of thing. <laughs> we always go back, remember what our teachings are, remember what we came, what, what our elders actually stood up to, our culture, our, our, and that's why they resist it. The same thing with language. In today's age, we have a challenge with our younger people because now there's so much technology. They're, they're all involved in our video games and television. And we have ceremonies that go year round. So we have a ceremonial calendar. And our new year starts with what we call Boamuya, which is in uh, February that starts our new year. And then that's when the underground dances start. And then right around March, April, they come to the surface and they start dancing in plazas. Every village has a plaza. So these dances are all performed in the plaza. It's a, I'll just, it's like an amphitheater or Hopi. So all the dances are, are done there. And then during the, um, <clears throat> when the Kachina, we have Kachina dances and you'll see those dolls down on the Potomac. And the garments, the, the things that you see here, those are all handmade, handwoven. And you'll see a loom down there. The men make those for the the one to my closest to me on the on the right, to my right. That's a kilt that the men wore wear in ceremonies. That's a Hopi belt. Those are all weaved. And I think he has a loom for a Hopi belt down on the Potomac. So he's he's making that. So thank you again for coming. We really you don't know how much we appreciate this. So, I think we're, oh, is it okay? Okay, I think we're ready, so we're gonna get this performance on the way.
Thank you very much. And just a quick explanation about womanhood. They go to the groom's house. And I was mentioning the looms in, in the Potomac. So once, they, once she enters, the, so she'll go to the groom's house with the food offering. And if the family accept her, they'll welcome her in. Usually there's a, a kind of a, a challenge from the boys, their aunties, they're all, ah, we don't want her, she's not, you know, she don't know how to cook, you know, that kind of, it's all about, for, it's in fun, in good humor, good natured. And then once she enters the house, then the uncles, the, the father, they'll set up the looms in the kiva, and that's when they start weaving. Uh, you'll see that wedding rope out in the Potomac, it's that white one. There's two of them. There's a large one and a small one. And then they'll also make the shoes. Then they'll make the wedding belt. I think he has that on display. So during that whole time that the bride is there, she'll be cooking for the men that are making those. And once they finish, then the groom will take that to the house where the bride is. And then they'll do the final feeding of all the people that are helping. There's, there's a lot of people that are going to be helping. All the relatives will be there. So it's a, a gathering of just everybody in the village and even people from other villages. And then if the girl, if everything is ready, the only time that a girl will not be sent back to her house is when it's cloudy because she has to go home in the sunlight because we believe in the sun and pray to the sun because that's the one that gives us energy. So if it's a clear day, then the, the bride will get all dressed up in her brand new wedding robe and then she'll be sent home and then they're officially married. So that kind of concludes the wedding ceremony. However, then it's the the young ladies, the brides now turn to start to do what she's doing, grinding corn, all that. So we still have a payback, what they call a payback, which is the final uh, capping of the marriage, so to speak, so that she then pays for her wedding rope. But it doesn't end there. There's all those other things. So I just wanted to mention that to at, some, at least help you explain. So 
the cornmeal that she just ground, we use that for prayer, and he will offer some of that to you, whoever wants it. You can use it for prayer. And also, that's also a good, good for makeup. Because, because we use that. When you see the girl dancing, she has that white powderish on her face. That's cornmeal that they use for makeup. So, so that concludes this ceremony, uh, this performance. We have one more left. So thank you again for coming, joining us. All right, quick, quick.